Welcome to this discussion on how to use entity relationship diagrams when designing databases. For the purpose of this presentation, we will use our Rugby World Cup 2019 scenario as a basis. Although we can create ERD using pen and paper, ERD design tools such as Lucidchart makes the task much easier. When designing databases, engineers must analyze data associated with different classes of data. This analysis can be extremely complicated to assist them in building an understanding of the nature and interaction of different classes of data, engineers use ERD diagrams to visualize the relationship between these different classes of data. It is often useful to consider data dictionaries when analyzing data classes and their interrelationship. The basic idea of data dictionaries is to use a spreadsheet to represent uh, and describe different classes of data. For each data class, the data dictionary contains detail of the class's attributes, um, the type of data, primary keys, default values, and descriptions of uh, the attributes used. The main component within the ERD diagram is called an entity. The entity is used to describe data information about an object or an event. It may be convenient to consider each data class in the data dictionary as a separate entity in your entity relationship diagram. The information about an entity is built up using attributes. Each attribute contains one piece of data that, when added together, completely describes the entity. Each attribute in the ERD comprises a key, field, and type component, where the field contains the name of the attribute and the type contains the data type of that attribute. Using our team example, we can add a team ID, a team name, a nickname, a world ranking, and the name of the head coach. Each of these attributes are of a variety of data types, such as big int, varchar, and in some cases, long var binary for images. Note that these data types are specific to the data platform we will be using. To uniquely identify the specific record, such as a specific team, we require an attribute that uniquely identifies the record. Such a unique identifier is called a primary key. In this ERD tool, a primary key is flagged by entering the phrase PK in the key component next to the attribute. Let us now consider the relationship between two entities. The relationship indicates how the two sets of data interact with each other. We will use our example from the Rugby World Cup 2019. Let us consider the entity teams and players. To represent the relationship between the teams and the players, the ERD diagram allows us to link these two entities with a line. You will notice that each line starts and ends in an extraordinary symbol. These symbols denote the cardinality between the two entities. The cardinality denotes mainly the minimum and maximum relationship between the data sets. There are a variety of different cardinalities. But let's look at an example. In the exa example of the teams and players, starting with teams, a player can only play in one team. We denote that by the one and only one symbol. However, a team can have multiple players or even no players while no team members have been selected. This is denoted by the zero or many symbol. By changing the start and end point symbolism as such, when we design the database, the database relationship rules will know that a player can only play for one team while multiple players can play for a single team. By using an ERD diagram in this way, an entire database can be designed containing multiple entities and relationships. Depending on the ERD tool used, it is possible to extract SQL queries that can later be used to generate the actual database. To, show, to see how we use the ERD design when creating a database, follow the link in the description below.